Thank you for having me. Undertow follows the life of Maggie Ambrose, a 56-year-old career politician who plans to run for president. This excerpt occurs a few months before Maggie wins her first election for the Massachusetts House of Representatives 10th District seat. If you hear a Boston accent, it's for dramatic effect only and has nothing to do with the fact that I'm from there. After climbing the concrete staircase, Maggie and Helen stopped to lean against the railing overlooking the ocean. Maggie shifted to face her. So tell me, are you married? Dating someone? Are you a mom? Helen lifted her chin, meeting Maggie's gaze. No kids. I'm not with anyone right now. My last relationship crashed and burned about five months ago when I found myself thinking about someone else. It wasn't fair to her. And although it's quite possible I won't ever be with that person, I knew it was the right thing to do. The word her seemed to hang in the air between them as though highlighted in bright yellow. Maggie glanced at Helen and was startled by the fear and insecurity she saw. Drawing herself up to her full height, shoulders back and lips pressed in a straight line, Maggie tried to control her anger. She narrowed her eyes. Do you think I'm prejudiced? Helen's eyebrows lowered enough to create a furrow between them. What? Do you think it makes a difference to me that you date women? I mean, have I ever given you that impression? Because that's the only reason I can think of for why you never trusted me enough to confide in me before now. Maggie broke their stare to watch a seagull careen through the air. Maggie, be realistic. People don't always react well when they realize a person's gay. Sometimes people pretend to be okay with it, but they become distant and suddenly they're too busy to meet. One day you wake up and realize the relationship has disappeared. And I'm not saying you do that, but we're getting to know each other. Understanding flooded through Maggie. Helen's reticence had nothing to do with her. Nah, I know the real reason you never told me. Maggie allowed a smirk to surface. You are afraid I guess your big secret. I'm the one you're thinking of all the time. Maggie brought her hand to her chest, fluttering her eyelashes several times. You're in love with me. She laughed when Helen shoved her away, a scowl on her face. It's okay, Helen, I get it. After all, I'm quite the catch. Yeah, right. As if I'd want to be with a pushover. Pushover? I'm not a pushover. I'm flexible. Easy going. Besides, someone who argues all the time is contrary. Totally unnecessary. I'm a great city solicitor because I know how to negotiate instead of fighting for everything. Tell me this. When's the last time you made an important decision because you wanted to do it, not someone else? Do you even want to run for office? Or is that a leftover idea from the previous time? Those are good questions. Maggie peered at Helen. I do want to run for office, even though it wasn't originally my idea at either time. This campaign is different for many reasons. I have a better understanding of what I'm doing. I want to make our community better for others. And I've worked on this campaign every step of the way, developing my campaign platform and arranging to meet people in the community. The last campaign was spoon-fed to me. I was told what to advocate and where to be. That's not true this time. Maggie indicated the ocean, listening to the roar of the waves. Although I learned as a kid it was safer for me to go with the flow, sometimes it didn't work out. Sometimes the undertow was dangerous, and I wasn't prepared to deal with the competing push and pull I found myself caught in. Sometimes I nearly drowned. That's how I felt when I was married. What you categorize as a pushover, I believe, was a necessary course for survival. Leaving the relationship and cutting ties with all that was associated with it was probably the first time I swam against the tide. Since then, I've made more decisions based on what I want, and I'll admit it's hard for me. I'm not like you. I don't grab life by the horns and wrangle it into submission. But I'm no longer the girl who floats on top of the waves following wherever the tide moves. Helen threw up her hands and exhaled loudly. Well, great. That was the last roadblock to not falling for you. Now what am I going to do? 
She pointed at Maggie. You need to tell me something horrible about yourself. It's for the good of our friendship. Yeah, no. You're out of luck because I'm the epitome of a perfect woman. Thank you. <laughs>